So, hello guys, and welcome to this new video. Um, today I'm going to present you a very common problem. Um, basically, you're building a huge sand system, and at some point in your sand system, there's going to be input and output. Uh, but it's not the input and output isn't going to be the same at every uh, point in time, like you would have be it would be with conveyor. Uh, however, on average, uh, the input and output is going to be the same. So, over long amounts of time, you will. Uh, get as much sand from this point as you will put into it. So there's conservation of sand, but only in the long term. In the short term, you need to save some sand for later. Uh, this is what we call a buffer normally. So basically in a buffer, you can have, you can get stuff out of it. You can put stuff into it. Um, and here I have a very basic buffer design, which you would use to solve this problem. Also, it's not very common, I'm aware. I should probably mention that. Um, anyway. Uh, this is what I thought would work uh, when I thought of this problem initially and also what I tried to build first. However, uh, there are definitely some complications with it, which is why I'm actually making this video. So let's go with a naive buffer design. Um, over here we have 12 cents into in this. We have also have a feedback loop using some elevators, a simple design. So of course this isn't part of the actual buffer, it's just to make uh, showcasing and, and like discussing this topic a bit easier for me. Over here we have a 9 game tick clock, so basically the output is going to happen every 9 game ticks. Uh, and the input as well, because again, because of this feedback loop, however, that's not a requirement. I'm, today I'm going to talk not about any kind of buffer, but asynchronous buffers, basically, where the output isn't like dictated by the input in some way. Some people would say, um, like in a synchronized buffer or a synchronous buffer, you could say, oh look, there can only be output input when there, there can only be input when there's no output, or if the reverse, well, Here's that's not the, here's that's not the case. Um, there's no like basically delay in between both of them. We can take into account. So we basically have to deal with that, and uh, this will not deal with that properly. So let me show you. Basically, time is just going down as you would expect. And for now, it's working fine. But uh, in a second, oh, you're noticing something. We lost a lot of sand. How did we do that sand? Well, basically. Two falling sanities went inside of each other, and they, when two falling sanities try to play, go into the side of the same block, then well, that causes problems, of course. I think think I can demonstrate it to be honest, but I need I need better skills for this. No, no, I don't think I'll be able to demonstrate it. However, you just saw we lost five cent out of twelve. So basically, that happened just because the cent over here is falling at a high speed. And over here you have sand falling at a low speed from the top of the pillar, so those two can just happen to be in the same block. And then uh, one of them will only become a block, the other one will become an item. Uh, not in here because I have game rule to tell drops off. False, yeah. But uh, on survival you would normally have this on true and you will get items, but you choose your sand blocks, which is probably not what you want with your sand system. So here we have a buffer system which deals with that. I also call it a buffer, even though it consists out of two buffers. Because the whole thing really serves as a buffer, you can get output from it when you need to, you can get input, you put stuff into it when you need to, and it will deal with that. As long as, of course, as with all buffers, as long as there's still uh, stuff left in here, and as long as you also fit some time constraints with your input and output, like you can't output at any kind of speed. In fact, this one is made to fit a 9 game tick clock, uh, as I uh, use over here. And the input will also be nine game or nine game ticks, even though you can probably make it a bit faster up here. I'm not sure about that. You will have to see. Anyway, um, that's why I will call this probably like something like a nine game tick asynchronous buffer. Anyway, uh, let's show this baby in action. So over here we have. Um, I think you may be able to get grasp the main concept of this because the right column is basically. Um, extracting right now, and oh look, now the left column is extracting and the right column is actually being filled. So yeah, as you can tell, um, we, there's basically this switch going on every once in a while, where it, just, uh, where it basically uh, stops, starts filling the other column and it starts extracting from the other column. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, up here we have a switch which decides, uh, which basically pulls sand one way or the other. This switch, uh, I will explain how the pulling works, but the switch is decided by this piston, basically. Uh, depending on the column, state of the columns, it will basically extend or retract, and that will make the switch go one way or the other. And that's what's causing the sand to go into one buffer or the other. 
At the bottom we have a similar mechanism, we're using zero tick pulses uh, to make sure that the timing works and we're actually um, getting one sand out of it every nine game ticks. Uh, so here we have some zero tick pulse generators. I use these because um, most designs won't work on a nine game tick cycle and to use them you would basically need to create a bigger zero tick pulse generator which consists of out of several smaller ones which but you need to use them alternate, uh, alternatingly. Um, in an, in an alternating manner, because else they would uh, time out, because they need some cooldown. Anyway, um, so here we use the same system with a piston switch and such, very simple. And um, the piston switch is being controlled by this latch, which is again is connected to these two connect uh, detectors. These simply detect when um, there isn't sand anymore at this height. Of course, when sand is falling, there it will not give a continuous pulse, so that's why we have this pulse lengthener. To make sure that it's always on as long as there's sand like in the pillar, there's a sand, part of the sand pillar there. Um, and yeah, basically that will put this, this, or this torch, will, torch will turn on. If this pillar is really empty, same thing over here. As you could just tell, it turned off because the pillar sank below the right level. And uh, yeah, then it sets a switch and it does basically start this, uh, using the other column for extraction and the other column for filling. Um, so yeah, that's basically the rough idea behind it. Now, there are is one thing you should take in mind. Um, the downside of this design, you could say, whatever you want to look at it. Anyway, uh, let me pause for a second. Now, before I get into this downside, though... Oh, we actually got it exactly in half again. Nice. Um, the downside of this design is, though, that... As, like, it was just random that it happened to end. Um, I was just lucky to have it end in, right in the middle, because... It will just stop at some point um, when you pass when you basically turn it off when you don't. I mean, input it will not try to. How should I say? One input is one. Uh, sorry, one output is one output. If you ask for one block out, it will give you one block out, and so if stuff can happen to the buffer inside. It doesn't know anyway. Um, if you were to have more than, uh, what should I say? What I'm really trying to say here is that the capacity of this buffer system or buffer is actually just the length of one of these two buffers. That may seem strange to you, you actually have like two spaces, all of you would probably think, oh, let's fill both of these guys up, all the way to the top. But that's a very bad idea because basically one will always be going down and the other one will going up, be going up. And as a result, if you were to have both of them full, it will just start extracting from one and will try to fill the other and it will Im overflow immediately. Um, so it's really just good practice to fill it up to half, That's because that's the actual capacity of the thing. If I were to add this, then there's a chance that it would uh, this thing would that all the sand from here would uh, end up going over here uh, when I pause it, and then the thing would overflow. And we don't like overflow, so that's take that into account. But the issue I would like to talk about right now is what happens if you have too little sand in your buffer, because that can also be an issue. Of course, if your buffer is just too small, then you won't be able to get output all the time. But this is not an issue of buffer being too small to provide enough uh, blocks. It's just about it being too small to work for this particular system. Um, so as you can tell, we just had two sand uh, going inside of each other right here. That's not good. Thank you, we all just had it too. And it, it's basically being caused by the fact that the sand has to fall quite a distance. But the column the sand goes into is decided at the time the sand is up here. So basically, uh, well, in fact, it's decided a bit even a bit uh, before that because of the delays up here and such. So as a result, um, basically the switch down here may hardly be uh, switched and extracting from um, extracting from one column while uh, back when the sand was dropped, it was actually dropped into that column because the, switch up, uh, because the switch up here at that time, like a second earlier, was still in that state. As a result, uh, you can basically, the sand can still, when it switches between states, sand can still drop into the wrong buffer. Uh, now that's not an issue if your buffer, if the buffer on that side is um, large enough, it is high enough, sorry, because basically the sand will fall to the top of the pillar before that top of the pillar will start collapsing. However, over here you can tell it's very close, and in the beginning we had problems with it. Um, so yeah, basically, the pillar goes up. Now it will start extracting, as you could tell. The sand only barely made it in time. If it fell a bit later, then it uh, would have uh, basically went to the same block with the top pillar block. So. Uh, yeah. 
That's something you should take into account. That make sure that you have enough sand in your system. A good practice, as I said, is just to oh, okay, fill it halfway. Also, as you could tell, like yeah, there wasn't enough sand. I think we lost two or something along those lines. We really want to lose zero in a normal sand system, I would say. So that's um, a real buffer which I will be using, which deals with this problem. Uh, so an asynchronous 0.45 seconds sand buffer. Uh, I don't think there's too much more to discuss. Uh, you can download this design in the description if you want to mess around with your with, with it for yourself. I will also include the feedback loop, even though that's technically not, not part of the buffer. I think it will be quite useful to uh, also have that if you want to do some tests with this design. Anyway, thanks for watching, people. I hope you liked this video. Even if you didn't, please leave a rating. Also, I apologize for the length. Uh, I tried to make my videos shorter since very, very recently. However, right now, I just to wanted to do a bit more of a technical talk and discuss some of the uh, aspects of this design. Therefore, it's a bit longer. But uh, with all that being said, thanks for watching, and I hope I will see you in another video.